maybe the thing you're most scared of is exactly what you I do. I love what I do still. I have passion for it. Whatever it was, I, I just try to dominate. What you say your name and tell me what you do? Uh, I'm Chris Evans. I'm an actor. If you could give yourself advice, like look back and, and, and talk to the 12-year-old version of yourself, yeah. what advice would you give? You know what I'd say? And it sounds... It might, it, it might seem oversimplified, but it's profound. I, I'd say... Shh. It's been a big thing for me. You know, it's so funny how noisy my brain is, and everyone's brain is noisy. It's what it does. It makes thoughts. And the problem is, I think, in most of our lives, the root of suffering is following that brain noise and listening to that brain noise and actually identifying with it as if it's who you are. That's just the noise your brain makes. You know, and, and more often than not, it probably doesn't have much to say. It's going to help you. For Captain America, I, I read that you turned down the role a number of times. Can you just explain why? It was because it was a big commitment. They wanted six movies, and, you know, normally you do movies one at a time. And if one of those movies hits and is a success, and your life noticeably changes, you know, your personal life, your anonymity, your privacy is affected, you have the opportunity to stop and regroup and go home and just, you know, make a decision from then on how you want to proceed with your life. The worry was if this movie hits and there is a lifestyle change and I don't react well to it, I don't have the opportunity, the luxury to say, you know, guys, I'm good. I think I'm going to go back to doing, you know, indies or, or maybe something else. You know, maybe in a couple of years I don't want to act anymore. I don't know. It's just six movies can be spread over ten years. and You're making a decision for a decade and it's not just a decision for you. If the lifestyle changes to a point where your anonymity is compromised, then it's really not your right to complain anymore. So if all of a sudden someone in your family ends up in a hospital and you're going in and out every day and someone's taking pictures of you and you complain, everyone's going to say, too bad, you made this bed, sleep in it. And that's a shame. And that's a decision you have to make and prepare for. This isn't this ripple effect isn't just going to be uh, about me. And that's scary, you know, and you think, well, is there another way to get where I want to get without this? You know what I mean? If the, if the strings attached are six movies, that's a scary loss of control that I just wasn't ready to process. And. So I said no, and uh, I asked every human being in my life what they thought, and you know, everyone said I should do the movie, and um, I did. I said I've gone to therapy. I went to therapy. I was like, fine, I'll talk to, talk to a therapist, see what they have to say, and, you know, because uh, you know, I do struggle with, I get anxiety about certain things and press and things like that, and it's, you know, all those things were tied into the Marvel responsibilities. And it kind of started to shift on me. It's, it's, it started to feel like maybe the thing you're most scared of is exactly what you should do. Maybe this is actually what you should push yourself into. And it just started to make sense to me that way. And I said, let's go for it. And, uh, you know, it was a bumpy acclimation. It was certainly a nerve-wracking first couple weeks of shooting as to whether or not I made the right choice. But in retrospect, it certainly was. Oh, my God. Can you imagine it? Kicking myself. <laughs> oh, oh, and my agents got, you know, a lifetime supply of I told you so off that one. The times that I felt my best are the moments that I've been able to pull that plug and say, and it's not quitting, it's not giving up, it's not washing your hands of the thought, it's rising above it. It's operating on a separate plane. It's, 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 you can't dissect why that works because the reason it works doesn't speak the same language that the brain speaks. You can't try and say, well, why shush? Because the shush is, you know, it's different. It's different. And when you just, it just feels good. And you're like, that's better. That's better. And I think back to all the amount of time I've probably spent suffering as a result of brain noise. Hours of my life wasted. Just, so that's what I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I got a place back there. I mean, like I said, I got these now. I just prefer these guys. I'm one of six. Uh, I have uh, three brothers and two older sisters. Myself, and one brother, younger sister. We're really close. You know, a very tight knit family. We did everything together. We're all actors, so we're all very melodramatic. We're all very um, you know, imaginative, and we play a lot of games together just in our backyard. I had a great childhood, I had a great youth, and my family was a big part of that, that's why I love them, but going home for me is kind of where I just reconnect to that part of my mind, you know, and you just come out here for too long, and 
things that shouldn't matter start mattering, and you say, I got, I got to recharge. Initially, I was really big into uh, art. I was also drawing and painting, and thought art school was going to be the path I was going to take. I didn't start acting until I was about maybe 13, 14. My older sister was doing plays. She was having a ball. I figured I'd try it, and it was a good time, so I kept doing it. Probably had much bigger balls then than I do now. Now I sit, you know, terrified before auditions. I probably couldn't wait to get in the room. I mean, I think back to some of the things I did at, you know, uh, acting camp and things like that. Just the, the gusto, the willingness. The burglar or the bald soprano? I was in the version of burglar. And what role did you play? I don't remember. I mean, I, I did a lot of plays. I couldn't tell you the... I, I, I mean... I have nightmares about this, where you're backstage and all of a sudden you're like, all right, we're doing the virtual book, you gotta go. It's like, I don't remember my lines. Just get out there, they'll come to you. And you come out on stage with a play you did 15 years ago, and you're forced, this is, this is what happens when I sleep. Back, yeah. back in the good old days. The good old days, 97. What a time. Where did that change? I mean, when, when did the anxiety start to uh, When it actually matters, you know, when you're like auditioning for you know, for your work, your career, your life, you know, you're an adult, it's not just fun and games, you're actually trying to build something, and when it doesn't work out, you start to kind of get, you know, it's a heady game acting, you know, for any movie you book, there's probably, you know, dozens of rejections, and that, that can play on you, so you start to kind of put pressure on yourself, you know. Sometimes you go through stints of having really good auditions, really solid auditions, being like, I'm good, every time I go in the room, I feel centered, I'm present, I'm ready. Other times, you're like, man, I, I feel like I forget how to act. And, and you're on shaky ground every time you step in a room. You said that, that it's, there's a search to be in the moment. Mm -hmm. Does that only apply to acting? It's everything that reality looks and feels and smells and sounds like that you know it's not. And, and you're completely in control of that unfolding. And that's the time where I really feel the most present. And I think that's part of my addiction to acting because I struggle to find that in life. It's a bit harder when there's no script and this is just happening in a chaotic form. But the hunt for the moment, you know, the hunt to be present, that's the goal. I mean, acting is like a temporary artificial substitute that it's like a drug. It's great. Um, my goal in life is to find that, you know, to be present like that in life. It's hard.